The lead singer of Hawk Nelson recently said he doesn't believe in God anymore. Here's why. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Isaac David and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. Before we get into today's video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Patreon is a way that people can support me and this channel, my ministry, and help it going and growing. And so I thank you if you're on Patreon supporting me on a monthly basis. And if you'd like to help support me and help me do this full time, because that is my dream um, and my passion, uh, please head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple link in description. Let's get on to the video. So John Steingard, lead singer of the famous band Hawk Nelson, recently said, hey, I don't believe in God anymore, or at least I don't believe in the God of Christianity. This kind of put shock, you know, sent shock waves through Christian media because Hawk Nelson for a long time um, was the most poppin' band, you know? If you look back, I mean, my siblings were totally into Hawk Nelson. Me, a little bit less, I was a little bit younger, but in the early 2000s or 2008, 2009, 2010, it was like, whew, Hawk Nelson is putting out all the bangers and all the Christian teen kids. You put like Hawk Nelson is there for sure. Um, we had like Super Chick and, and you know, and then earlier on it was like DZ Talk and then it was like Newsboys. But they were in this realm of like, hey, they're putting out like cool music, but they're also also Christians. And so that was like so attractive and, you know, putting out like letters to the president or Sadie Hawkins dance or just, you know, these really popular songs that I think hold up to this day. What my little brother told me, and he's a little bit more of a historian on Hawk Nelson, I haven't been into their music a lot, but he told me about, you know, their lead singer, Joshua Dunn, who stepped away from the band, and ultimately this guy, John uh, Steingard, he stepped up to take the place as the lead singer. Um, their Christian, their music became that much more Christian, so before it was maybe, the, you know, putting out fun, relevant music for teens, and they were also Christian, but now it was Christian forward. And so that kind of, you know, it, it sets up the story of this guy, John Steingard, who brought a little bit more of a vocally Christian, you know, outlook um, on the band. And now he's the guy that is is now like, hey, I don't believe in the God of Christianity anymore. I wouldn't normally just talk about, you know, every single person that leaves Christianity. Um, but in his uh, Instagram post, it really struck me at the honesty that he had um you know even that we've talked about a couple different people in like Rhett and link leaving christianity or in joshua harris of i kiss dating goodbye leaving christianity and so i just thought you know what for us for christians watching this and if you're a non-christian maybe you can get a sense of just the honesty of where this man was at and maybe learn from it and and and, and see how god and how um you see how we interact with our questions about God and our doubts and, and how that really just plays into our faith. And so I just want to read a little bit from John Steingard's um, Instagram here, his post. Um, yeah, I encourage you to read it. It's just an interesting in outlook on his perspective. But this is what he says here. Why does God seem so pissed off in most of the Old Testament? And then all of a sudden he's a loving father in the New Testament. Why does he uh, say not to kill, but then instructs Israel to turn around and kill men and women and children uh, to take the promised land? Why does God let Job suffer horrible things well, and to just bid, win a bet with Satan? Why does he tell Abram, Abraham um, to kill his son, more killing again, and then basically say, just kidding, that was a test? Why did Jesus have to die for our sins? More killing again. If God can do anything, can he forgive without someone dying? I mean, my parents taught me to forgive people. Nobody dies in that scenario. So, just like blatant honesty. And, and if we're each honest with ourselves, if you're a Christian watching this, um, maybe you've asked yourself some of these questions too. And, and maybe you've searched the scriptures for some answers. And, and John talks about the fact that he, he did look in the scriptures, but he came up empty. He was unmoved by um, church and by worship and he did he said he didn't enjoy reading his bible and so this progression just seemed natural where 
you know, what he had grown up believing. He grew up in a Christian household. It kind of faded away and his questions went unanswered. So why stay? And look, I don't want to take this video and it'll be way too long of a video if I were to go into each of his questions um, and, and kind of dig in there and, 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 and answer, answer his questions there. I'm not saying I could do it perfectly anyway, but when I see you know, his heart there, I, I just have great like empathy for him. And, and, and I think maybe this is the overwhelming um, narrative of this video is seeing somebody that is struggling, that is trying to find, you know, answers to these questions that seem to be, you know, tapping into the very, you know, fundamental issues of their soul and they're coming up empty. And, and so, you are just left there. You're like, Hey, but this is the truth, but this is the truth and, and stay in the family and stay, stay with us here. Um, but he's strayed away. And so for us looking at him and, and maybe you've had somebody in your family or a friend that seemed to stray away from the faith. How do you encounter them and how do you interact with them? I think the, the biggest thing that I could encourage you guys towards is, um, don't abandon them right? Uh, so often we, we have this idea that we only, the people we keep closest are the people that think, think the most like we do. And, and the people that, you know, are, are, it's like this kind of echo chamber of like, yeah, this is right. This is right. And, and so we're not digging into those big questions or we're not allowing those questions to be spoken because we're, we're scared that we may start doubting too. But my encouragement to you, and this is what I'm trying to f figure out for myself is, pour into those people, draw nearer to those people because they are the people that need you the most. And look, you may not have all the answers to these questions. I'm reading this now and, and I'm trying to formulate, look, each and every answer in my mind. I'm like, okay, no, this is why this is this way. And this is why this and this way. At the same time, it's not just about having all our questions answered. It's about God's transforming work in us, giving us a new identity in him. It, it, like it's the <laughs> my catchphrase at least has become my catchphrase it's not about information it's about transformation and how does that transformation comes about come about it comes about through relationship and so w if we're just totally focused on either abandoning the person or just kind of cranking information into them say no this is why this is why you're wrong this is why it's true this is why you right and just totally trying to go at them and convince them we're forgetting about that transformational part. And, and I think just as God and, and just as Jesus walks with us in our doubt and in our, you know, sometimes our unbelief and he, he and he's kind to us and he's gracious to us and, and, and he, and his love overflows and, and, you know, he welcomes us into his family, but he also sees those who have strayed and he has, the, has great compassion for those people too. That's how we ought to be approaching this. Not with judgment and saying, no, nah, he's wrong. He's, he was just, you know, he, he didn't study the Bible well enough to get the answers to say, no, this is, this is all a journey that we're all going through. And yes, there is truth and God has revealed it to us, but I'm not going to smack him over the head in order to get him to come back. No, I want to walk with him and show him God's love because God's love doesn't change when we all of a sudden stray off the path no he's welcoming us back and and that's that's what i would ask of you guys if there's somebody in your life that's straying away welcome them back not with judgment but with but with acceptance and it just uh you know don't compromise the truth and that's a tricky thing like i, I could sit here and try to do a role play and explain that and, and but i'm not perfect at it either so this is the new, this is what we're, we're walking into in our lives. And, and, and this is just more evident. There are people that are going to move away from what we believe. And how do we navigate that? Important questions. Have grace in doubts. Because this is heavy stuff. And um, there is answers. But also answers sometimes, it's not the issue. It's that heart issue. It's not the mind, it's the heart. And, and what we ask for is that God's presence and power to just flow through us to other people. And, and so, you know, my pastor, he says, God, God works in us so he can work through us. And I'm just like, that is a perfect representation. That is so, so true. So let, you know, let God work in you 
and let that let God work through you in that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this bonus video. Um, once again, just quick thoughts. I didn't schedule. I didn't plan out too much of this video. Just kind of my my thoughts. It, just hearing this this issue and this uh, this story. Um, I pray you were blessed by it, and I'll see you next time.